Welcome to Desktop Prototyping Essentials and Framer. My name is Akram Khalid, and in this video, we'll be learning how to use code overrides to create hover effects for our navigation items, add interactivity to our chart, as well as sending a message within our chat frame. If you are watching this video from YouTube, be sure to click the link in the description below to follow along in Framer. Before we begin, make sure to switch pages in the upper left corner to follow along with the correct part of the tutorial. Code overrides are snippets of JavaScript placed on top of a component and are executed the moment your prototype is previewed, for example, in the prototype view or the preview. They can be placed on top of elements you draw on the canvas, such as a frame or text layer, but you could use these to override code components also. To create a code override in the top left section, select code, and this will switch us to the code panel. In the bottom of the screen, we'll select create code file. We'll name our code file nav hover, and instead of new component, we'll check new override. This will create us a TSX file with sample code inside. We can use these sample overrides to apply them to any frame on our canvas, but we want to create our own, so I'll just select all and erase. At the top, I'm going to import override, data, and color from Framer. The data object allows data to be shared between frames using code overrides. Any changes to the data instance will cause the preview to update and code overrides will re-render. The color function can be used to define colors either as a string value or as an object. What I'll first do is create a data variable that will house the data object. The data that I am going to store is a background color. I'll create a background property with the color function, a hex value of F7, F7, F8. This will store that light gray color for when we hover on our navigation items. Next, I'll go ahead and create a function called nav hover. Be sure to export this function and the function type will be set to override. Inside this function, I am going to return a while hover property. Now all the properties and information is coming from the framer API. So be sure to check that out if you need additional resources. The while hover property runs a certain animation when the hover gesture is recognized. So when I've hovered on the navigation item, what I want to do is change the background. I'll add a background property and then I will add the color function and as the argument, I'll pass data.background, which is what we stored in the data object. I'll go ahead and save now by hitting Control S or Command S on the keyboard and then switching over to the layers panel in the top left section. I'll select the transaction frame and in the right overrides property, I'll add the plus icon, selecting the file nav hover. And for override, I'll select nav hover, which is going to be the nav hover function we created. I'll then preview. And when we hover on the transaction, you can see that the background now turns to that light gray color. I can go ahead and select the other three frames and do the exact same process of selecting the file of nav hover with the nav hover override. Previewing again, now when we hover on any of these frames, they are then running that nav override function. That's going to do it for the navigation. Next, we'll continue practicing using overrides by animating a chart. First thing I'm going to do is select the analytics frame and hit command 2 or control 2 on your keyboard. And what we're hoping to create is when we hover on these different bars, the bar will become active and the tooltip will appear, giving us a value for these different dates. Currently September 1st is active and what I'll do is select the active bar one and just lower the opacity to zero. I'll switch to the code panel and at the bottom of the screen, I'll create a new code file. I'll give it a name of chart and hit create. Now again, Framer always gives us sample code when we create a new override. So what I'll do is just select it all and delete. As always, I'll go ahead and import override from Framer. I'll then create a function called active hover bar and assign a type of override. Inside of our active hover bar function, I'll then return a while hover and I'll set the opacity to one. I can also pass in a transition, which then I can control duration, easing, etc. I'll just control the duration and set it to point two. I'll then save the file with control S or command S and switch back to our layers view. I'll select the active bar one and in the right section underneath the overrides property, I'll hit the plus button and select the file of chart. As far as the override, I'll select active hover bar. I'll then preview and when we hover on our September 1st bar, you can see that it becomes active and it shows off the tooltip. Now what we want to do next is the same effect for all the other columns. I'll go ahead and close the preview. And with active bar one selected, I'll go ahead and turn the opacity to 100% so that we can make copies of this frame. I'll then select the option key on my keyboard and click and drag the active bar one frame to the right so that we can make an exact copy. If you're on Windows, you'll select the alt key and click and drag. 
I'll then decrease the height to best fit the September 3rd bar and hit Command 2 or Control 2 to fit it to frame so that we could better see what we're working with. Matching it up to be the exact same size of how the September 3rd bar looks, we can then edit the tooltip. I'll select the text and change it to $14.34 and then adjusting the width of the tooltip, I'll make sure to decrease it to a width of 43. I'll then zoom out so that we can get a better look at the bars and selecting the tooltip, I'll hit fit content on the right side so that we can get rid of any additional space and then just making final adjustments, making sure it is all aligned, centered and perfect. I'll then select the copied active bar one and our overrides should already exist because it was a copy off the first one. I'll then zoom out so that we can get both bars into frame and then selecting both of them, I'll turn the opacity all the way to zero. Let's go ahead and preview and now when we hover on the first bar, it becomes active and when we hover on the second bar, that also becomes active as well. All that's left is to add that same effect to the last four bars. I'll go ahead and close out of the preview and I'll replicate the exact same steps that I did for September 3rd, for September 8th, 11th, 20th, and the 22nd. Okay, so I have that active bar one frame copied and pasted on September 8th, 11th, 20th, and the 22nd. And so if we go ahead and preview now, when we hover on each individual bar, they all have this unique way of displaying that they are active and showing the results of the tooltip. In the next section, we're going to get a bit more complex and add interactivity to a chat component. First thing I'm going to do is select our message and hit command control 2 to fit it to frame. Then I want to scroll down a bit so we can make some room for an additional speech bubble. I'll select the first speech bubble and I'll click option or alt on the keyboard and drag down to make a copy. I'll then change the text to say hello with three question marks. And in the top right under layout, I'll set the position top to 12 and right to 12 as well. Next, I will select the speech bubble frame and shrink it down to where we have a margin of 12 surrounding our hello text. For exact dimensions, the width is set to 74 and the height is set to 42. Zooming out to the chat override frame, what I'll then do is select the speech bubble and lower the opacity to zero. In the top left section, I'll then switch to the code panel and create a new code file. I'll name the code file chat and check new override. This will create us a new TSX file, and like in our other examples, every time we create a new file, Framer will provide us sample overrides to work with, so we can just select all and delete. At the very top, I'll import override and data from Framer. I'll then create a variable called message, which would be a data object. The properties I will house are text and sent. Text being set to an empty string and sent to false. I'll then create a new function called input. Be sure to export the function and add the override type. Inside the input override, I'll return an on value change, which returns the value of the input every time it is changed. I'll pass value as the parameter and inside the on value change method, I'll set message.text to value. This will update the text property inside of our message data to whichever value we enter in our input. Next, we'll create another function called message. Be sure to export it and add your override type. And inside the message override, we'll assign text to message.text. This will allow us to update a certain text value to whatever value we have set in our message's text data. Let's go ahead and save the file and switch back to the layers panel. I'll then select the input and in the bottom right corner, we have an overrides property where we can select the plus button to add a file. The file we'll select is chat and the override will select as input. Then selecting the speech bubble and the text, I'll turn the opacity to 100%. With the text selected, I'll add an override. The file will be set to chat and the override will be set to message. If we go ahead and preview, we can start typing inside of our input and you'll clearly notice our text from the speech bubble is matching everything we're typing. Let's go ahead and close out of our preview and switch back to the code panel. And one thing I want to show here is that we can actually preview our prototype as we're writing code. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and close the preview window so that we have more room to write our code. What we'll do next is create another function called send message. Be sure to export it and add your override type. I'll then return an on tap method, which runs once we've tapped on a layer. What we'll do is set message.sent to true, meaning we've sent the message. Then I'll create another function called message bubble animation. And inside the message bubble animation function, I'll return an animate property, which will animate the opacity. 
I'll then use a ternary operator to determine the value of our opacity. A ternary operator is just like an if statement. It takes three arguments, a condition and two expressions. The condition typically results in a true false value. And if the condition is true, it executes the first expression. Otherwise it executes the second expression. You could have multiple conditions, but for our example, we're keeping it very simple, allowing us to only have two expressions or outcomes. Now in our code, depending on what the value of message.sent is, we'll set the opacity to one or zero. So if message.sent is true, setting the opacity to one, and if it's false, we'll set the opacity to zero. We'll do the exact same thing for our scale, setting message.sent as our condition, one as our first expression, and zero as our second expression. We'll switch back to our layers panel and then selecting the send icon, I'll add an override selecting the file as chat and the override as send message, then selecting the speech bubble, I'll add an override of file chat and the override as message bubble animation. I'll go ahead and select the speech bubble and lower the opacity to zero. Let's open up the preview window. And now if I type hey you in the input and click the send icon, we'll get the speech bubble to animate in. Now if I erase the text, you can see it also erases the value in our speech bubble. We can fix that by switching back to the code panel and inside the input override, I'll set value as a ternary operator. I'll set message.sent as a condition and the first expression will be an empty string and the second condition will be a message.text. So what this is doing is setting the value of our input to an empty string if the message has been sent. So if I send a message, it'll clear out whatever value is on our input. We can test that out by going to the layers panel and selecting the preview. And you can see as I type and send the message, once it's sent, the value in the input erases. The last thing I wanna fix is the margins of our text. You can see it's a bit to the left. So selecting the message speech bubble, I'll turn the opacity all the way to 100% so that we can see what we're working on. And then I'll align the text to center as well as center align the frame. Now if we preview and test again, if I type hey Mira, you can see that it works perfectly. It does have that bit of a flash every time we refresh and that is because the opacity initially is set to 100%. So back in our project, just turn that down to zero and you should be good to go. And that marks the completion of working with overrides.